Hello everyone, I am Shanullah. I am a PhD student at Inhan University, South Korea. Uh, my major is Computer Vision and Deep Learning. Uh, and today in this video, we will be covering image recognition and classification algorithm uh, based on deep learning architectures. How deep learning architectures resolve this image recognition and classification problem. So in this regard, we will be using Python and in Python, we will be using the deep learning uh, library, which is TensorFlow. So before diving into actual um, coding, it's better that we should have some brainstorming. So what is image classification and recognition? So based on salient feature, for example, this is a dog image, sorry, this is a dog image, right? So we do have a grass and some background as well but the most salient feature in this image is obvious obviously it's a dog right and similarly the most promising and most salient feature in this image is a fish and in this image it is a dog and in this image it's elephant obviously so if we provide this image to a deep learning architecture it will definitely um, classify this image as a dog and in this image as a fish this image as a dog and this image as an elephant but how to do it so uh, let's get back to some history so in 2012 AlexNet uh, beat the in uh, image classification challenge in 2012 um, AlexNet beat the human capacity right so in that in this regard uh, deep learning architectures become really famous and uh, since then we are using and we are checking uh, I mean we are really surprising day by day by the deep learning architectures they are performing very well alright so we have some famous uh, deep learning algorithms for image classification such as AlexNet, GoogleNet and MobileNet and MobileNet is also by Google and the TensorFlow is also by Google so uh, okay so uh, MobileNet is uh, uh, I guess in 2017 it was the first version and now it has three versions in 2008 it has second version 2 and in 2019 it has third version as well so we will be using mobile net and other algorithms as well for this particular problem such as image classification or recognition and in this regard we will be using the image net data set which was the part of a challenge right so but Again, uh, I mean, we can start now uh, the coding of the image classification, but uh, you might have heard a lot of other words similar to image classification or recognition, such as object detection. So, for example, in this, uh, why we need object detection, for example. So, what is the, how to classify this image? Because the both of them are salient feature, right? So, uh, it's unfair if we classify this image as a cat uh, or a dog, right? So because both of the candidate have sal same salient feature, right? So in this regard, we can solve this problem using object detection. So object detection, actually the background is based on classification as well. But we, in this object detection, we also localize the image as well, such as in this uh, picture or image uh, the dog is also localized and we have um, covered some boundary and we have shown that this is the dog at, at this location right so similarly the cat and dog is separated like this and this is a real world problem uh, of um, I mean for example uh, it's a traffic it can be traffic signal camera as well in this regard we all know that what's happening over here and every object possibly is has been classified and multiple objects have been detected right and the in this regard we will be using two algorithms right like mobile net and with SSD as well single shot multiple uh, multi box detector but this is not the main topic of our this presentation if you want to learn ab uh, more about how to implement object detection you can check our other videos about object detection but in this video we will be only covering image recognition but why we are uh, have we have added object detection because you might have heard a lot of uh, these words so that is why uh, the first goal was to clarify that what is the difference between uh, image classification and object detection so in the object detection image classification classification is the base and then we uh, added some another feature like localization and then this is how we perform object detection and 
similarly you might have heard about image segmentation so definitely image segmentation is again uh, based on these algorithms but definitely we will uh, in the image segmentation we have to classify each pixel right rather than object we have to further classify each pixel uh, this is semantic segmentation as well so we have instance segmentation and semantic segmentation these are some typical example of image segmentation so now that we are clarified that what is the difference between image segmentation object detection and uh, image classification our today's topic is image recognition or classification so let's dive into the implementation and the ingredients uh, for cooking something definitely we need some ingredients so in this regard today's uh, we uh, uh, our lecture is about python implementation will be purely based on python and if you're using windows 10 uh, so you're lucky that we have anaconda uh, which is a package of multiple libraries and ids so you can have jupyter notebook spider vs code and others and then later after installing anaconda we can install these libraries such as uh, TensorFlow uh, for deep learning implementation, NumPy for some arrays and other cl calculations, uh, OpenCV for image loading and showing your image, and Pill similarly for same uh, goal like a pip install pillow, we can install it, and I will show you how to install these things as well. Okay, uh, and uh, that ends for the some brainstorming. Let's dive into the uh, implementation. So, the best thing is that if you want to install Anaconda, the best thing is just write uh, on a Google, uh, Google download Anaconda. After you write, you will have some links, and you if you open first link, you will have some different uh, 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 different exe files to download, right? S such as it's based on Python, the latest 3.8 version, as Python 2 is almost obsolete. So 64 bit and based on your computer specification or uh, your operating system you are using, you can just download. Okay, so I have already downloaded and installed this Anaconda, and it's super simple in Windows. Just next, next, next. As you already uh, thanks to Windows, it's a user friendly thing. So uh, user friendly operating system, so we can easily install. So after installing uh, over here, you can observe that some of them have launch button and some of them have install. So in this tutorial, I will be uh, covering uh, the ID uh, I will use is Jupyter Notebook. Okay, for programming, I will use Jupyter Notebook and I have already installed. So for example, if you um, install Anaconda, it will not be installed. So all you need is to just click install button and it will be installed soon. Okay, so now I assume that you have already ins uh, installed Anaconda in your computer and then Jupyter Notebook in your computer. So it's always better to manage uh, everything in folder. So for example, I believe that if you have uh, some uh, created app uh, your folder, just copy the link of the folder. So and just go to uh, your uh, search bar and press the Anaconda prompt. Okay. Before that, you open Anaconda uh, Navigator for installing things, but now you can go to Anaconda Prompt. Now that you have opened the Anaconda Prompt, let me zoom it, okay? Now that you have uh, uh, already opened it, so it's better that you copy and... Um, so you have already opened... Yeah, so you just paste the... Uh, okay, you, pay, you can just paste the path but it's better that you write a CD so that we can go to uh, that um, location. Now that we have already entered in that location, just write Jupyter Notebook after you have installed the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so I'm sorry, it's my multiple uh, window option. So it will be automatically open in the um, your explorer right so then you can just uh, write new and python and then you will have a uh, you will you can open it right so let me separate it uh, for you guys so that we can only uh, enjoy it so um, after opening it so i assume uh, 
uh, that you have already installed uh, all the dependencies but if not let me show you how to do it for example again you can go for anaconda and this time you just right click and run on as administrator right and give that uh, permission to it and just after you install uh, I mean after you open as administrator you can just write uh, pip install tensorflow okay all you need is to just write pip install tensorflow and just enter it it will be installed okay so and make sure that uh, diving into the uh, opening the Jupyter notebook you must have the same um, environment right uh, in my case it's base environment so just uh, create an environment first okay so now I assume that you have already installed the tensorflow okay so uh, after being uh, installed uh, I can um, write uh, import tensorflow as tf okay so my spelling was wrong I guess so now that I can uh, do like import tensorflow as tf okay so I can just write if you have not installed the right click the anaconda run as administrator and just pip install tensorflow okay so as it's a beginner level Mm, no, tutorial so that is why I'm explaining everything okay so that you should you guys should be with me okay so after writing this uh, let me copy some of the command to save the time okay so you can import uh, numpy as unpy, uh, np so what I'm doing actually I'm just pressing over here for every command I'm pressing shift plus enter if you shift plus uh, do uh, if you press keep the shift uh, keep the um, shift uh, key pressing and uh, press shift and enter together so you will be go to next like shift enter like this okay so now that we have imported these two so let's let me have um, okay so like file name is equal to image data so actually inside my um, where I'm working it's an image data folder and I have multiple images over here okay as I have multiple uh, images I want to for example I want to load this image right so I have named check the name and secondly I have checked the uh, what's the ex extension is it? that's jpg okay so in other case it's uh, some of them are jpeg okay so make sure that you have written the correct uh, the correct uh, uh, the format of the image okay so now uh, you can just write it so now uh, the file name is only as a string right so now we have not loaded it yet so over here uh, as it's a beginner level uh, tutorial so i would like to uh, teach you or show you some four different methods how to read an image right so definitely before diving like uh, presenting this um, image to deep learning uh, architecture that and to ask deep learning architecture that what is it is it a dog is it a cat or what type of image it is to classify the image definitely first we need to load it all right so for example, before uh, loading it, uh, okay, you the, the the best thing why I like Jupyter notebooks, you can make your notes very uh, brilliantly. Okay, it's very good to use. Uh, uh, let me show you. For example, first uh, as uh, we have four method, I will teach you in this video. So first method to load an image. Okay, so shift enter, but this case I can go to cell and cell type I can change markdown. Okay and then again shift enter you see this become uh, as a text so you can write all your you can separate your text and your notes this is the best thing about the notebook Jupyter notebook okay so first method to load image is using ipython so okay so from ipython so uh, i hope that if you install Jupyter notebook so ipython will be automatically loaded okay so if not then you can just google it and I hope you can find similar command like pip install and you can just uh, execute these commands in the anaconda uh, the command window as I showed you before so for example again shift enter I did and now you, you see I can just successfully load this image uh, and just uh, I'm just checking that this is the image 
uh, I'm I just uh, displayed okay so uh, the the reason why I have the targeted size is 224 224 is because most of the deep learning uh, algorithms are trained on 224 224 uh, size okay so by 3 as well so this is RGB image 224 224 and 3 okay this was first and second is a good I love uh, this thing about the Jupyter notebook second method to load an image okay and again just you can just go to cell and mark down and then shift and enter second method to load an image okay so what's the second uh, method so second method I'm going to teach you guys is Keras using TensorFlow and Keras. So Keras is basically a TensorFlow based API. It was before a um, few years back it was a separate uh, deep learning library uh, written in Python but Keras was so amazing that uh, I guess TensorFlow or Google bought it and now Ten Keras is a part of TensorFlow. So once you install TensorFlow Keras will be automatically installed okay so it's the good thing. So now we will be using the Keras API to uh, load an image okay that our target size again is 2 to 4 2 to 4 but in this case over here the second thing is that uh, so far although we have uh, loaded the image but we have not um, showed or displayed it over here in order to display it the best tool uh, in the Jupyter notebook or any other is just like if you guys are familiar with MATLAB so in MATLAB uh, we can display images using plot commands so in Python we have for plotting the famous uh, library is matplotlib okay so uh, if you have not installed just kind of install like I have written the command and you can just follow the instruction and just like previously you have you guys have installed using anaconda command prompt and you can just run this command and it ho hopefully it will be installed in your computer shift enter matplotlib is now installed so plt dot I am show okay so as I have this image so let me copy this image um, execute you see I have uh, achieved 2 to 4 and 2 to 4 image okay so the best thing about the IPython was in order to display although these images are exactly similar why because the size is 2 to 4 into 2 to 4 but this looks uh, more good why because it is using ipython which is a part of a jupyter notebook as well okay so that is why but don't worry uh, as well as far as the deep learning is concerned everything is fine so far so now we have learned two methods uh, let's um, start our third model learning third model. third uh, third method sorry third method to load an image okay okay knock down and this is third method method to load an image and the third method over here I'm teaching you guys is um, I'm learning as well okay so it's best rather that you learn and teach together so okay so uh, the OpenCV is uh, the or C++ based or C based uh, mm, you can say image processing kind of library initially it was only with uh, provided uh, for C++ and C but now uh, but not now but since uh, many years uh, it is now also available in Python as well so now uh, you can just install pip install OpenCV Python and it will be all automatically installed and then after being installed you can just import it using import cv2 command okay it's super simple okay once uh, that uh, I think it's the most uh, most uh, famously used uh, for image processing like loading image image resizing and other thing other tasks okay so I can just uh, see right like cv2.im read file name file name is already you see if you can notice over here file name is already there right uh, in uh, over here I should have all not written but anyhow it's okay so over here I am using file name and now I have uh, read the image but uh, if I over here plt.im show like this and gg if I like do like this you can see over here this image is not as the colors there are something terribly wrong in the colors right so the colors are different and second thing you can notice that 
the size is different why because we have not targeted any size rather than 2 to 4 2 to 4 we have just targeted the original size but the problem in this is it's not RGB actually it's GBR okay so uh, in order to execute uh, in order to do it best I think the best thing is that let's change the size okay and let's execute the command again so the size is still uh, it's changed but uh, the color uh, is still uh, not changed right so in order to change the color uh, the command is we use as I told you that it's BGR so it's better to convert it into RGB right so this is the command now you can see the color combination of this and this image is almost same okay so uh, now we have learned three methods one is for um, one is using ipython uh, second is tensorflow keras third method is cv2 like open cv and let's uh, learn our last method okay fourth method to load an uh, image okay so although this is not a part of the image recognition but definitely uh, you can choose any of the four so uh, while I was covering one of the method so I thought I should uh, inform you guys about all of the methods so it's better whatever you like so you can go for it okay so it's the kind of learning things right so it's better that we learn and um, we should know about different methods okay fourth method to load an image okay so what is it what is it? what is it okay so the fourth method is python uh, uh, library which is pil pil is uh, python imaging library so for small things you know the best one among this so far is actually opencv in opencv you can do a lot of things right but uh, as long as only as long as only loading an image and resizing it and small kind of filtering is concerned you can use any of the four but if you want to dive into real image processing definitely opencv is the best but uh, this is also a good uh, method and why i'm uh, i mean teaching you all these things because sometimes in the embedded system i'm using the xavier and nvidia other embedded systems sorry for the out of topic uh, thing but sometimes you don't have uh, all of the installations uh, available in your computer or hardware system or embedded system so you can go for any pre-installed thing so it's better so I think most of the time pill, pill is the most light light one and it is very easily installed with a Python so um, sometimes it's already installed but if, if it's not then pip install pillar is the command okay so again uh, we can just do it like this Okay, again, just like OpenCV, uh, we uh, while the loading the time uh, at loading time we don't specify the target image size, and then later we can just like OpenCV we can resize it. But you can see over here while we performing OpenCV we said CV2 dot resize, and over here we said I am the image name dot resize into two to four into two to four, and now we can just execute the command. Okay, so now we have so now we have learned four different methods uh, for loading an image now that we have loaded image still it's a raw image before that it was in hard disk now it's in your RAM uh, it's uploaded uh, as a as a um, as a variable right now we have an image in our variable but uh, it's not um, we haven't done anything with it okay so let's uh, load uh, the the deep learning model okay uh, again I will write like this hash and space and cell and cell type and mark down and like this it's really best that you can make your notes and you can save it and later you can check you don't need to execute right so this is best best when I check later uh, when I open it everything will be same okay so this is best you can track record your previous history and that everything is run okay it was running uh, in a good way okay so uh, for deep learning model definitely as I told you in the start that sorry for moving fast so I, I loaded this import tensorflow STF already okay so uh, let me define some for example mobile okay it's a my variable name 
and I will say that tf dot keras okay dot a when I say I, and when I type tab uh, when I press tab it will be automatically completed then mobile as I told you mobile net is the famous one so in 2017 mobile net one was the most latest one then in 2018 it was mobile net 2 and 19 it was mobile net version 3 so we have three versions but uh, unfortunately version 3 is not actually very easily available version 1 and 2 is easily available so what is mobile net those guys those who don't know about mobile net mobile net is a deep learning architecture for image classification so the good thing about TensorFlow Keras API is that the deep learning arch architecture are already being trained. So all of the weights uh, and uh, the weights of the networks is already uh, pre-trained and they are set. All you need is to just deploy it. Okay. So uh, the deep uh, as long uh, uh, as the deep learning is concerned, uh, first initially definitely we have to teach a deep learning architecture that what is cat, what is dog, right? So in this video, as it's a beginner level video, we are not performing any kind of training. Rather, we are using a pre-trained uh, deep learning architecture. Okay. So thanks to Keras. Uh, and TensorFlow API, uh, Keras API, that it's already available. Okay, so let me select mobile net and then dot mobile again, mobile net, and then call it like this. Okay, so uh, I have already per uh, executed this command actually, so that is why it's, ju it's just executed. But in in your case, when you will be doing, it will be start downloading it. Okay, because in the in the, in the fresh start, you will not have uh, mobile net. These weights already trained mobile net uh, model is not trained in your computer. So in this regard, first when you execute the command, if it do not exist, it will automatically download. Don't worry. All you need is to just execute this command. Okay. So now that we have a model, so simple. Now we have a variable such as mobile is a variable in which we have all the weights of the mobile net version one that's really good okay this is a deep learning model weights or architecture already okay it's pre-trained okay we have pre-trained okay now as we have a pre-trained uh, uh, architecture already so now uh, Okay, so we have uh, actually we have four phases, four phases again in the deep learning. So the first phase is actually training, okay, but not training. I would say creating a model, okay. Actually, uh, if we don't use a pre-trainer, or then it's creating a model. Then after creating a model, training a model, okay. When we have to train it, and then after training, we have to test or validate it. Okay, okay, and test. And after test and validation, that everything is fine, the final stage is predict. Okay, in the prediction, what's the different difference between test and predict is in the test case, we also provide labels. Okay, label means uh, before the train uh, while we are training, definitely in the training part, we teach the deep learning that. This is cat, this is dog. So in the supervised learning, we have to teach that it's a, for example, it's a, a cat or dog or what is it, okay? So in the predict, the best thing about predict is you can download any type of image from internet. As long as it is two, by, two to four and two to four, you can just predict your classification algorithm, okay? You can just check it. You don't need any label. Let uh, let's ask the deep learning architecture that what is it okay so the best thing is about predict so as this image do not belong to the image net data set I have downloaded this from an inter from internet okay so you can download any image okay that's the beauty of the prediction so in this regard we will be doing prediction okay okay let's start the prediction okay for prediction oh my god for before prediction we have to do pre-processing of the pre-processing of the image okay we cannot just pass this two to four directly into the deep learning architecture okay so I think uh, it's better to change it into our nodes mm, okay now that we have to uh, change into nodes so pre-processing what kind of pre-processing we have to do no 
two. So uh, let me uh, copy um, the best method again. So actually, uh, I'm using this. Okay. Okay. You have to verify which one it is. Actually, it's a TensorFlow one, right? Uh, this one. I'm using it again. Okay. It's like from TensorFlow, Keras, preprocessing image, and image. Okay. So let me copy again these commands and then paste it again over here okay so let's execute it this now uh, till that point at this point we already check and let me uh, check the image is is it uh, like a like a plt dot I am and show So we do have image. So we, we have displayed, and now let's perform some uh, pre-processing. Okay. So there are actually technically three kind of image. Uh, I mean, there's some pre-processing. Okay. So actually, uh, uh, as you can see over here, if I check, mm, okay. Uh, actually, this is a resized image. Uh, okay, resized image. Uh, it's converted to array so let me check the resized image dot shape okay so you see 2 to 4 2 to 4 into 3 so actually RGB is our 3 channel right so we have 3 channel uh, red green and blue RGB channels and each has 2 to 4 2 to 4 dimension but for deep learning architecture we need the fourth dimension as well so that is why we are using numpy array uh, as I told you that I did, let's go back. I did NumPy as NP already, so now I'm doing it using it for my like a final image is equal to NP dot expand dims. I'm extend exp expanding them. If I check the shape of this image, you see I have one more extra dimension. Okay, so after having one more extra dimension, we need to pre-process this image like final image TF dot Keras application mobile and pre-process in the so now uh, I, I think our pre-processing is already finished, but almost finished, not the completed one. Uh, we need some utils, okay? Why we need uh, utils? Uh, okay, I, I think we should cover this util thing after it, okay? So, oh, okay, sorry, this is mobile, okay? So, for example, this was our variable mobile, which we just in this we have deep learning weights of the mobile net okay for image classification so for example I can perform on this final image my prediction okay so this prediction is already performed but now uh, if we check uh, if we check print predictions so it has a lot of things stuff like that we don't know about it okay so it's a huge stuff and we do actually don't know what is it okay because we did not uh, uh, provide them what what are the labels okay uh, move it okay so as we have not provided him the labels so the best thing uh, is to check whether your answer is okay or not so again we are using some utility such as from tensorflow.caras application import image net utils okay so now if we you convert your this uh, predictions into decoding de decode production now if you print your results okay so these are your uh, uh, results okay so now this it can let me plt dot am show oh, and show is img I guess yes this is img okay let me check my image again okay so this was our image okay so it has five or a top uh, actually it has five top predictions right so uh, and based on the some confidence level like uh, it's a 40 percent confident uh, the probability is 40 percent confident that there's a street car it in it okay and it has police van okay uh, and third it's a garbage truck obviously not and we have a minibus maybe it's saying minibus and a cab obviously we do have a cab okay but this was all algo was based on the mobile net version 1 which is 2017 algorithm and it was a more lightweight but its accuracy was 70 percent so it's better that we use 70 not this uh, it's better that we use um, another algorithm okay 
So, um, okay, let me copy um, the, okay, over here, let me add, the, this is the beauty of the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, mobile, let me give it same uh, Keras, oh, sorry, Keras dot applications dot mobile. In this case, now I can choose mobile and version 2, okay, dot mobile version 2 and now we can do like this okay now my mobile version is changed it's now uh, become mobile and version 2 which is more accurate than mobile and version 1 okay so now uh, let me uh, I, I should not remove these lines and I should predict again okay let me predict again okay and I have performed prediction again and let me check my results again and I should print my results again. Let's just copy and paste. Okay, you see this now. It's uh, in the top uh, minibus, streetcar, ambulance. Okay, now it has predicted the ambulance. Okay, now we are going some good. And you see the traffic light as well and a cab as well. So now we have a very good thing. Although this algorithm is basically designed only for one object, as I showed you in the in the in the beginning, like. For a simple image, cat and dog. But the good thing about it, it, it can give you five top five uh, uh, possibilities. Okay, or top five peaks. Okay, um, I'm not going into the deeper uh, deep concepts because if if it's for beginners, definitely you guys might not understand what are what are peak of the algorithms. Okay, so you can say that five top predictions that it can be minibus it can be streetcar ambulance traffic light and cab okay so you see that it's a more mobile and version 2 is more accurate and the best thing about this uh, architecture our uh, architecture is that you can use over here the best thing about the keras is that you can use any of them okay uh, where is our loading part over here just let me click okay so i can have for example uh, let me any Anyone, anyone is equal to tr dot caras, sorry caras dot applic applications dot. Now that I press tab, there are a lot of options like dense net, inception, okay, mobile net, version two, and nas net, and a lot of them resnet, vgg net. So you can try any of them okay and it's super simple you can try the keras thanks to keras api that it has provided us many of the algorithms already available in the market and it's pre-trained and you can perform your prediction on any image you can just download your image from the internet and then you can just load this image uh, by using my method that i taught you in this lecture and you can use any of them and and you can get your predictions that's the best thing and then you can display it as well and you can perform a lot of other uh, um, activities you can just perform okay so and you uh, it was a complex you see this was a complex object but if you give uh, if you provided a cat or a dog or a very simple image it's really easy for example okay for you guys i'm doing it again so let's change the okay let's uh, let me change this side uh, the image okay Okay, I think this was the one. Okay, so let me change the file name. Ah, oh, that's okay. I will write the file name again. That's okay. Where's my file name? Okay, uh, let me write it over here. No, 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 no. Or let me write it over here. Okay, that's a good thing. Not over here. Okay, this was my image name. File name is equal to here and thus here. So I might think it's better to copy the command. Okay, this is the this was the one. And now make sure that you do you give it the actual dimension. Oh, where is it? This one. Okay, let me copy it over here and thus let me copy it over here. But actually it is GPEG. Okay. If you can see, like these images are JPEG file and it was a jpg file okay so make sure that you are providing them uh the the actual one okay ah uh, it's amy file name ah uh, uh file name okay like this let's 
uh, it's very super simple J uh, shift enter shift run. now it's a it's a different thing right it's a different object so let me perform all of these steps again again and again shift enter shift enter super simple shift enter that's all so when I perform sh shift enter you can see that this is 0.95 percent accurate that is called in this hand but if I change algorithm let me change the algorithm again for example this was version 1 let me execute this command shift enter now we have mobile and version 1 which is less accurate than version 2 okay guys so let's predict only because our input image is not changed all we have changed is only algorithm right if you perform a prediction again you can just check over here it was some different let me print again okay separately so that we can just check the difference you see this mobile net this is mobile net version 1 oh mobile net version 1 of 2017 actually and this is mobile net version 2 of 2018 actually okay so latest one uh, latest one is version th 3 but it's not available in the Keras although you can download your the trained architecture from their website but uh, it's not available in the Keras Tensor, uh, TensorFlow version 2 so you see over here version 1 is less accurate so that is why it is a bit confusing uh, and the first peak is hen or the second peak is cock so the but the the exact answer is this one okay so it's 95% accurate that it's a cock okay and uh, another one is hen um, some other animals I get vulture I don't know what is it okay so the best thing is uh, the, you have to decide which version you are using so the more simple image the best result you will get but if you have complex images uh, like 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 I have just removed like this so you can have different images uh, okay thank you so much this is all for image recognition part the implementation of the image recognition in the TensorFlow if you want to learn about object detection and image segmentation and other deep learning tools and programming it and First, we I think we will start from brainstorming. As I'm a PhD scholar, so I'm performing my PhD. So definitely, um, I will try my best to put all of my effort what I'm learning. So I'm a student as well, right? So I'm learning as well, and I'm trying to teach as well. So it's the good uh, technique to teach others whatever you learn. So okay, uh, thank you so much for this, and stay tuned, and please keep watching uh, the videos in my channel. Thank you so much. So nice of you.